Okay, so I don't have enough time to finish this because I'm gonna be booted out of the studio soon. And I just recorded this whole thing and the sound didn't record. So first, okay, let's just check that, check that it's working this time. Yeah, God, never make a video as your presentation. We're just gonna go through it and see what happens and hopefully it works out. And if you want, you can pause and kind of read more deeply. We're going to talk about Franz Fanon's Wretched of the Earth, and specifically through the eyes of James Yaki Sales. And I was kind of motivated to do this presentation because a professor of mine had a pacifist reading of Franz Fanon, and I thought it was kind of absurd, and I revisited uh, his Concerning Violence, which is the first chapter of Wretched of the Earth. And here are some, um, you know, quotations that I think demonstrate that Fanon uh, was not a pacifist. Not only was he not uh, not a pacifist, he saw violence as uh, axiomatically necessary for decolonization and indicted nonviolence as a tool of the bourgeoisie, as something that protects the state. Hearing my professor's take on Fanon kind of reminded me of how liberals have a, a somewhat warped idea of reality. And I think this was demonstrated very clearly with uh, these images of the CIA, uh, the, sorry, CIA, the CNN covering the protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin as fiery but mostly peaceful while the city is literally burning behind the presenter and people are throwing um, stones at police. Uh, this was, of course, during the George Floyd moment, uh, during the uprising after the shooting of Jacob Blake seven times in the back by, by police. It just shows how pacifism sort of works on liberals on the level of, of uh, perception. For Fanon, the violence of decolonization was obvious. It was a necessity. This is reflected by his life choices as well as his work. So a quick overview of Fanon's life. Um, he was born in the French colony of Martinique. He was taught in high school by the great Afro-Caribbean poet Aimé Césaire. He was a decorated anti-fascist soldier, uh, fought in the resistance to the Vichy regime in the Caribbean and against the Nazis in France, notably in the battles of Alsace. In 1951, he was qualified as a psychiatrist in France, uh, having studied in Lyon, uh, became involved in struggles against colonialism. Uh, in 1952, he published Black Skin, White Masks, which was actually uh, based on a doctoral dissertation he wrote that was rejected from his university. In 53, he went to Algeria as head of a psychiatric department of a hospital, uh, left hospital in 1956 and joined the Front de Libération Nationale, Le Papillon. the um, National Liberation Front, um, was exiled to Tunis, founded the Mujahid Freedom Fighter magazine, became a leading ideologue and military strategist of the FLN. He represented the FLN across Africa, trained nurses, trained FLN members in combat and techniques for resisting torture, housed fugitive freedom fighters, survived an assassination attempt in Libya, was attacked in 59 and severely wounded, and by 1960, after completing a massive intelligence operation from Mali to Algeria, trying to open the southern front, he was diagnosed with leukemia and dictated Wretched of the Earth while being ill, went to the U.S. to seek medical treatment, was detained by the CIA for 10 days and denied treatment, contracted pneumonia, which led to his death in Washington, D.C. on December 1961. This incredible life trajectory informs a theoretical body of work that is foundational to the thought of anti-colonial struggles around the world, which brings me to the late Yaki Sales, a political prisoner and member of the Black Liberation Army who, writing from within prison, offers a reading of Fanon that I believe cuts through a lot of the academic noise that I've discussed um, and that sort of bogs us down in the tired old debate of violence versus nonviolence. And, you know, Yaki invites us to transgress that discussion and examine theory that can lead towards decolonial achievements. So for some context on Yaki, he was born in Chicago uh, to refugees from the South, from Oklahoma and Mississippi. He spent his youth in, in and out of juvenile facilities, influenced by uh, Langston Hughes, Black Panther Party, Malcolm X. In 67, he was arrested on armed robbery and attempted murder charges. First time he was imprisoned as an adult in 
In prison, he started organizing with Pan-African nationalists at Pontiac Prison in Illinois, reading Marcus Gar Garvey, Fanon, etc. Released in 68, arrested again in 67 on murder charges after doing above and underground um, activity, and started corresponding with political prisoners such as Sundiata Ecoli, joined the Black Liberation Army, rose in the ranks of the BLA, joined the, the CC of the BLA, died in 2008 of cancer while working on the last section of Meditations on Franz Fanon's Wretched of the Earth, which we are going to discuss. The anonymous editors of Meditations tell us Yaki went in the footsteps of internationally claimed figures such as George Jackson in addition to Fanon, um, but remained largely obscure and unknown by his own design. They tell us Yaki writes to and from the fire and outline the historical tradition in which he produced his work. In effect, they're offering us a rereading of this, the sanitized history of social movements taught in American history classes. So this history includes, maybe I'll move myself over there. Can I do that? What happens if I do this? Will this work? No. There we go. Oh, okay, now I'm here. This is exciting. Um, so this history includes fragging, which were uh, assassinations of uh, military officers by uh, low-ranking, especially black soldiers, um, which they say has brought the U.S. invasion to uh, a standstill by the early 1970s. Another story this is the story of the Attica prison uprising, um, where eventually, unfortunately, the state massacred prisoners and their own guards uh, in their show of law and order. Of course, there's the history of the urban uprisings of the, you know, the civil rights era, uh, which they say as a movement, despite not advertising it or presenting itself as nonviolent, was quietly armed to the teeth uh, as because it had to be, because Klan and police were um, raiding communities at night and people had to defend themselves. Maybe I'll move myself all the way over there. Does this work? Oh! Ah. <laughs> like magic. Um, to understand Yaki's politics, write the anonymous editors, you first have to understand that revolutionary nationalism was at its intense core. Um, rather than a white imperialist conceptualization of racial identity, Yaki offers a new African identity. He also usually called his politics communalism, rejecting Marxism as a European claim to owning or naming communal thought. And he had a strategic understanding of racial capitalism. So race and capitalism go hand in hand. Race craft and, and capital are part of the same mechanism. And he says it's counterproductive to ever talk about racism without immediately and thoroughly linking it to capitalism so that no one can be unmindful of the need to struggle against capitalism if they, if they claim to be anti-racist. He had a framework of transformation of consciousness first and foremost. All prisoners are, are political, but they need to transform from captive colonials to political prisoners in their own process of gaining consciousness, while those on the outside need to transform from colonial subjects to conscious citizens and active caters. And interestingly, this is also true for, for settlers. Settlers can also transform. And this is, this is where he indicts Sartre. He starts meditations with an ana analysis of Sartre's preface to Wretched of the Earth. And he thinks Sartre's take is, is valuable, but criticizes his um, crucial misunderstanding of Fanon's deconstruction of the concept of race. Yaki writes, How did Fanon distinguish friends from enemies? Friends were those who actively worked for Algerian independence, i.e. the FLN and its supporters in Algeria, anti-colonial people in France, formerly colonized nations throughout the world. Enemies were those who worked against Algerian independence, i.e the colonial government in Algeria and its supporters, the government in Paris and its followers, developed nations with a vested interest in maintaining the imperialist status quo. This is what allows every individual living in Algeria to be an Algerian. These are the words of Fanon. This is why friends and enemies are distinguished by the choices they make. The choices they make, not race. Yaki writes, Fanon continues, the settler is not simply the person that must be killed, Many members of the mass of colonialists reveal themselves to be much, much nearer to the national struggle than certain sons and daughters of the nation. The barriers of blood and race 
um, are broken down on both sides. Thus, we begin to refuse to identify ourselves, refuse to identify anyone in racial terms. These are Yaki's words. He moves on from the preface to the first chapter um, on violence or concerning violence. And he goes from the axiomatic understanding of the necessity of violence or counter-violence to nuance. All means cultural, social, psychological, political, economic, not only military. Um, so all means must be used for decolonization. Yaki writes, read Wretched carefully and you'll see that Fanon T talks much less about the use of arms than he does about the need for the people to develop their consciousness and to learn to lead themselves. This might be why my professor was confused. Fanon discusses the limitations of violence, but he never questions its axiomatic role, meaning its necessity in reversing colonial violence. So, going back over here, Per Yaki Decolonization equals revolutionary violence, but revolutionary violence's most vital role is on the level of consciousness because colonialism creates a colonized personality and total liberation is that which concerns all sectors of the personality. The risk of not aiming towards total liberation is neocolonialism which may be even more nefarious than late-stage colonialism. This ties back to Yaki's theoretical framework. We recognize the problems with commodity fetishism, consumerism, and with colonial identity constructions, race, but we're afraid to cut the cord. Decolonization, in its ideal result, a la Yaki, will be decentralized to the extreme, per fanon and avoid the creation of politicians, leaders, demagogues, magicians, etc., the people will allow no one to set themselves up as liberators. Fanon, they must do it themselves. Yaki writes, it's simply, exclamation point, about the people asserting their new identity. But the fact is, I don't have all the answers. I'm in prison and removed from the setting where the answers are most likely to be found. My job is to help with the hows and the whys. You have to find the what's for yourselves, and then test the theory, test the lessons, find the appropriate ways to take reality as it is, and transform it. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, I thought about this as a practice video, you know, just learning to use the technology, but my classmates encouraged me to post it, so here goes. If you're here because of the clickbaity thumbnail and want to hear more about the pacifism debate, well, um, I apologize. <laughs> but uh, you should know that there is a part two to this where I would um, go more deeply into Yaki's book, and I could also discuss the... Um, pacifism conversation and try to understand my professor's position in, you know, I suppose a more empathetic way. Uh, so if this interests you, let me know. And if I get enough encouragement, I might just make it. Uh, otherwise, I have big plans for this channel with two much more ambitious uh, radical theory video essays that are almost ready to go. So um, subscribe if you're interested. And don't forget to smash the state. And see you next time.